So I made my five year progression video and looking back on how hard I struggled, I wanted to give a player like myself from way back in the day, a hundred tips to keep up with today's meta. This is officially my 10th hundred tip video and I haven't posted one in over eight months. Before we start, I got to plug the merch. If you spend $50 or more, you get free shipping. If this video helps you out, use code Kemi's in the shop. This is by far the biggest beginner guide that I wish I knew if I was a brand new player to Fortnite. As a beginner on Fortnite, the first thing you want to do is figure out your sensitivity Activity if you play on mouse and keyboard or controller, they're different. That can be a whole separate video in and of itself. So I'm going to leave two videos linked down below, one for controller and one for mouse and keyboard that I made back in the day that are still relevant. I would say starting out on any game, people want to know the best settings to run the game at. Now, if you're on console, you can't really change anything besides brightness. Now on PC, chances are no matter what type of PC you have, whether it's good or bad, you want to make sure you're running performance mode, which is the lowest quality, but the most FPS. And even pros run this on the best PC sees out. People with 4090s will still use performance mode. Some of the people use high meshes and some of the people use low meshes. Really quickly, this is high meshes. As you can see, this is probably the normal Fortnite that most of the people are used to. And when walls are fully built, you can see through them a little bit. If I switch over to low meshes, this is what it looks like. So when I use brick or metal, you're going to see that you can't see through any of the builds really besides these little holes. But the positive side is people say that there's way less delay on low meshes, which is why people use it. And if your PC is downright trash, you should probably use low meshes. If you're a beginner on the game, I would definitely recommend to use high meshes if you can do it because you can see through your builds. It makes you more aware and especially starting out on the game, you kind of want that extra help. So I'm going to show you a quick trick that I know when you farm stuff in Fortnite. So someone on stream one time, they asked me when I was farming a tree, they say, how do you hit the circle every single time? Then I told them, I said that I have pretty decent aim. So I just got used to hitting it. If you want a trick, one thing you can do is just literally press your face up against the tree or whatever you're farming and it will hit every single time. Now I kind of have to put this guy down. Okay. He got pooped on. So if you're kind of a noob at hitting the circles, you can literally just go right up to it and it just never moves pretty much right now. I don't know what type of heals that you guys carry in fights, but if I were you, I'd be trying to hold the quickest heals possible. So that way, whenever I'm in a fight, all I have to do is just pop it for one second and I'll get it off before I get pressured again. Things like minis, fish, chug splashes. Those are going to be your go-to heals in game because you don't have to worry about getting counter shots off before popping one of those or a med miss. And like I said, chug splashes earlier. Okay. So whenever I get a kill, let me show you something real quick. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my pickaxe and I'm just going to run over all this loot and spam my interact key. Once again, run over all the loot with my pickaxe. Now I grabbed all the loot and I'm all good to go because none of my weapons swapped while I was doing that. Beginner players all the time, they're going to spam their interact key and just pick up the wrong thing. This is going to be pretty dang basic. Okay, so when you dive out of the battle bus, don't be a noob. Use your head a little bit. Let's say I want to go to Anvil Square. So I'm going to mark the place where I want to land. I'm going to jump from the bus a little early so that way I can get the lowest elevation possible. So right now, as I'm dropping, I'm trying to scan to see where that might be. And always in Fortnite, it's usually if there's water around the spot, it's going to be water. I don't want to land anywhere near the mountain. And what one thing I never want to do is land directly on top of the POI. People who deploy their gliders directly on top will always have a higher elevation. And then I land and now I got a good spot. And I never landed here before, but you can tell just by using those small little tricks that you'll probably get a gun first. So one of the things you want to make sure you can do is specifically when you're on controller, you want to make sure that you can crouch up and down while you have your builds out. Like this. If you don't go into controller settings, go into build controls and make sure you have crouch as one of your binds that you set it to, then you won't be able to crouch while you have your builds out. So if I'm making an edit or something and I want to like crouch, go up and down, I can't do that. Okay. So watch as I'm fighting this player right here. When I take his wall or maybe not. <laughs> so if I want to take someone's wall in my pickaxe, it does 75 damage when you don't hit the circle. When you do hit the circle, it does 150 though. Oh God. So generally speaking, whenever I want to take someone's wood wall, all I have to do is swing it twice and it instantly breaks every time. Let's see. Is this guy boxed in wood? Okay. We're going to swing twice and we get the win. So I'm just going to explain something. Bear with me. So when someone makes an edit on a wall, that's already being healed, I can take it with one pickaxe swing. Now, if it's a fully built wall, that's healthy. And I go to do that. And then I try and take it. It won't work because the wall is healthy. So in fights, when people are building out of hard mats and everything, and they make an edit when the wall is weak, I always try and claim it back in one swing. So I'm going to try and demonstrate how I do that in fights.
It's right there. Oh, no. Oh, I just missed it. Okay, so here's a good example. Let's see. I'm waiting for him to make an edit so I can grab it right back real quick. Again. It's good to know as a Fortnite player that when you place wood, it starts out at 90. When you place brick, it's 99. And when you start up with metal, it's 110. The max health is 150, 300, and then 500. So at any point in time, when you have a lot of people spraying at you or whatever the case may be, always try to use your hardest material. Pause. Okay, so I hate to be the bringer of bad news, but if you love your back blings and your weird looking Fortnite skins that are bulky and not skinny, most of the time these players aren't the greatest. People are more likely to just key you out of nowhere when you wear a skin that kind of looks like a bot. If you're new to the game again and wondering if that's still a thing, it is most definitely still a thing. As you can see, Exhibit A. When you go to your locker and then you click on the skin that you have and then you go to sort and filter and then you can go to favorites. Now, if you don't have any skins favorite at all, just go to the all section and let's just say I want to favorite this skin. I click on it and then I'll just hit F and then the little heart shows up. On controller, it should say it in the bottom right here. It's really just these sweaty girl skins that are people's most favorite. And I would say at the moment, the Laura Croft and the superhero skin are probably the most sweaty. Also, side note, this is the fourth rarest skin in the game. I have it on my account. Let's go. Weird flex, next tip. The first thing you wanna do if you're on keyboard, stop everything, go to your settings, and then go to use custom diagonals, turn that on, turn it to these numbers right here, 65, 90, and 144. This is what's gonna make building way easier, especially when you're building to a side like this, because all you have to do is just move in one direction. If I didn't have this on, I'd show you what would be happening. So as I'm building, right, and I'm building this tunnel here, I would just get closer and closer to this wall until I hit it. Since I have double movement, look how easy this is to build. Not only will it help with building, but it also helps when you're editing things. That guy's name was really I like D. <laughs> That's a good one. Something everyone does on keyboard and mouse is that they use scroll wheel reset. So if I do one click on the scroll, it grabs the edit and then the next click will confirm the edit. In order to set it up like this, go to your mouse and keyboard settings. So I have my normal building edit set to C. Also mouse wheel up. Then on my reset building edit, I have the right mouse click and then mouse scroll wheel up again. So now whenever I make an edit, I could just scroll up real quick and it resets. Just make sure that whatever you do that you don't over scroll and you get stuck in an animation like this. Now you have to take out your gun. So the thing that sucks about being a controller player is that you're pretty much out of luck. You have to do it the normal way where if you want to reset and edit, you grab it, press the reset button, and then confirm it. But there is a scroll wheel reset attachment that people will literally, pros do it a lot too, they will glue it to their controller. There's definitely a lot of players that can get used to it, but I never fully gave it a chance myself, so I wouldn't be able to tell you how good it actually is. I do know a lot of people will vouch using those things. So you know how on keyboard, how you have five weapon slots? I made sure that when I was setting up my own binds, my shotgun was one of the easiest ones to press out of the five. That is the most important slot. So whatever key binds you have set to your weapon slots, just make sure that the shotgun is the easiest one. Then the next one I would say is your AR and your SMG. So sometimes in the game, I'm not sure if you know this or not, but you can look up to place the stairs too. So a lot of times people will be tarping like this and then they'll look up to place a stair above them. So it's not always you have to look down to place stairs behind you. You can even just look up like this and then continue going. So if you play on controller, you need to make sure that you have your shotgun, your SMG, and pretend this was an AR, your AR in the last slot. It doesn't matter if you wanna switch the position of the SMG and the AR, that's fine. But your shotgun is always in your first slot when you play controller. That's because in order to get to your weapons, you have to take out your pickaxe and then you go to your shotgun. So let's just say that I'm my controller i know that i'm not but if i wanted to get to my shotgun i'd have to take out my pickaxe and then i'd have to switch to my smg and then i'd have to go to my shotgun so that's like three buttons instead if i just had my builds out i could just take out my pickaxe and then go to my shotgun two buttons the best setting in fortnite is the configure preferred item slots thing so if i just drop all my weapons and then i pick them all up they get assigned or configured to that certain slot so my shotguns in the first one my ar is in the second one and then my heels are in the last one And then we have to win this game. Let's go. So if I go to that setting again, I click on it. You can assign the loadout slot to shotgun, AR, or unassigned. Really useful for when you're in a panic end game like you just watched.
that is literally one of the best exploit in the game if you can time the shot with just going straight through the wall you have low ping on the game and you're blessed with that it will work almost 90 percent of the time so don't do it when you're just starting to go you want to make sure you're fully going and then you just tap and go at the same time make sure you have your settings just like mine if you go to the second option you go to combat settings you need to turn on hold to swap so right now i have an open slot if i wanted to exchange this for my shotgun i would have to pick it up and then I'd have to move it over. Now with hold to swap turned on, if I just hold my interact key, it swaps it for the current position that you pick the gun up with. It's also insanely important to have auto open up doors. Now it's not actually for opening up doors on real buildings because there's times in the game where you're gonna make a door at it and it just automatically opens and it makes it very easy to continue going forward. Honestly, my favorite setting is auto sort consumables to the right. So anytime you have a completely open inventory, it will always put the heels to the right side. It's also pretty important to have your mantle activation on hold to jump there's no reason to have it on hold forward hold to jump is a lot easier to time and personally if i was restarting the game right now i would have confirm edit on release turned off i have it on it's not the end of the world whatever you pick just know that it's not going to be the reason why you do or don't qual in tournaments oh my god um yeah but make sure you have toggle sprint turned on and from there you're pretty much good to go so if you were wondering the best edits to make on a wall i'm gonna show you so it's the top right hand corner edit like so and then you have a window edit and you can do this from any tile or you have the top row wall edit like this. And then the last but not least, you have the four tile edit like so. Anytime you do one of these edits, if you want to see where you are, so you're behind cover, you see this line right here. This line will show me where I need to be to be behind cover. So if I'm here, I'm not, I'm going to be exposed. So if I confirm the edit, I'll be exposed. But if I'm here, I see exactly where I need to be. And then I confirm the edit. And now I'm behind the right hand peak. If you're just starting out on the game, that's honestly one of the best tips you'll ever get when it comes to editing. One of my favorite drills as a beginner from back in the day that I practiced this all the time was just placing a wall editing it resetting it and then just constantly running through it and just going like this over and over and over again now when i started i practiced going from the bottom up so that way i was head level with my shotgun so it was easier for me to line up shotgun shots when i practiced this because i would always be positioning myself right at their face the reason why this is good is because you practice editing and then you practice resetting as well play arena anytime you want to play a real game mode and not creative just do me a favor when you get past 2000 arena points do not worry about gaining any more You're just going to play to improve your fighting skill so many people that making champions division means that you have some sort of skill that other people don't possess any above average player does not give a flying shit about how many points you have. Trust me, if they don't, neither should you. Raider is the guy that everybody talks about and everybody mentions. He's the person with the best editing maps, building maps, peace control maps, pretty much even aiming everything to do with Fortnite, he's got a creative map for it. All these random drills could seem extremely confusing, especially if you're brand new to the game. Start out with the easiest ones you can find. You don't need to do every single one. It's just really important to get reps in with building in certain ways to try and help you practice when it comes to a real game. For example, if you just go on YouTube, how to use Raiders, peace control map version 2. You see what comes up? Raiders peace control map. Jiven also made one of these two years ago and he walks through specifically how to do it without taking damage. There's one map that especially when I played controller starting out not too long ago like a month or two ago I used this map a ton. It's realistic pvp free for all made by Panville. So I go into a public game I start it up and once I get into this game I'm gonna show you how it works. So pretty much it's a 16 player free for all map and you can even choose the weapons that you spawn with so that you can pick the loadout that you want to practice with. Pretty much when you spawn in and stuff, it's a race to who can get 50 points first. Also, the more kills that you can get in a row without dying, the more points you're going to build up. So it's like a bigger multiplier. Also, I didn't realize the easiest way to remember your binds, I'm going to have to go back into this map. You put yourself into really high pressure situations. And since it's creative and it doesn't really matter that much, there's still a lot of fighting going on. So it's going to make you want to do the right edit and stuff. So even though you're not playing for any money or any sort of placements, it's still good for high pressure because you're going to practice doing the right thing when people are on your wall. Oh, that was nice. Also, because there's heals in the game, 
I have to practice boxing up, switching between guns, taking out my heels. As a beginner, those things are kind of difficult. Also, organizing your inventory. At random times, there are some sweats that play this, and I've even gotten into some of Booga's matches. This thing has all the qualities of a real game. Some of the most beginner moves that I'm happy that I practiced a lot when I started out was just running through and editing walls like this on repeat. Sometimes if you're really starting out and struggling, you can skip a wall like this, go to the next one. So I'm going to skip, go to the next one. And as you get better at it, right, you're going to practice doing it with a stair in between each one. And if you need to, you can space it out, right? So I'm going to edit and then space it out and then go again. As a beginner, those two moves in and of itself could be a real struggle, but I do those all the time now. The most OG move in the game is something called a waterfall. This was literally originated in like chapter one, season four or five. When you're really high up and let's say you're in a build fight or something and you want to drop down an elevation, you're going to turn around and place two walls and land on a stair like that. To be fair, it's honestly even three walls if you include the one that you land on. Then from here, you want to practice slicing the stair. Two walls, drop, slice stair, two walls, drop, and just practice doing that over and over and over. Another easy way of waterfalling is doing the same thing, right? getting in this position and then just plain old walking off it. And I'm just going to build forward. So what everybody does to connect themselves when they're two layers up, let's say you're about to get chopped down, you know, oh my God, I need to connect. Boom, two walls down below. And if there's a wall there, you can't do it. And then you see, I have to like fall down in order to do it. But when you're in the open like this, you could do it from like any point and it, it works really well. You don't even have to jump. So just look and place. Sometimes when you go to edit your cone and you have your wall build out, you're going to get stuck kind of just editing your wall because you're looking up. So in this case, you have to take out a pickaxe or your gun and then edit the cone and walk through. It's super annoying starting out when you don't know what's happening. And that's what this is. You see where it says harvesting tool down at the bottom. I have that set to nothing. You need to make sure that instead you bind that to the toggle harvesting tool. So usually when I drop on the corner of someone's wall, I'll just double tap my pickaxe bind. And I'll just sit there on the corner, take it out, switch it back, take it out, switch it back. And now this guy's like really being a drone. But in an essence, that's how it works. So this guy right here, I'm just going to walk up, take out my pickaxe, take out my gun. Take out my pickaxe, take out my gun. And then this guy's just complete drone. Take out my pickaxe, take out my gun again. Here we go. And any time now, buddy. Take out my pickaxe, take out my gun. Now, chances are, if you're a beginner, you definitely don't know that the middle window edits are the two smaller windows. So if I were to edit a middle window, it's bigger than just editing a side window. Now, especially if I were to edit in brick, it's a little bit more noticeable. You can kind of see how this rectangle is more just like up and down rather than this middle one, which is like, you know, massive. It's like a square. If I'm ever in a situation where there's like a guy on my wall like this, instead of making a middle window edit, I'll always try and make like a little side one here because it's a smaller peak for him to shoot me back. So here's a couple quick tips. When you look at a wall in Fortnite, if you are higher than the midway point of the wall in front of you, it places above you. If you're below, it goes below you. So let me show you real quick. If I'm higher than the halfway point, it goes above. If I'm lower, it goes to the bottom. If I were to do this with a cone, it's the same sort of aspect. But if you look even higher up, it goes above the wall. This is how I box people all the time. So I'll look above, place the cone, drag it over and down, and then I'll edit this and go for a shot there. I'm going to teach you the fastest way to do 90s in Fortnite. Literally, it's about as simple as knowing two things. You start out, it's doing walls and then you jump floor stair the two things are as you jump you want to make sure you're jumping forward into the stair and two throughout any point in time throughout you doing this if you get a floor above you while doing this that means you're looking too high or in the wrong direction so every time i do 90s notice how i'm looking below the halfway point of this wall right here so i always kind of look in the corner so boom like kind of, or you know, in this corner of that wall. And then from there, I can just rep those out as fast as I want. And I'm good to go. Start out by just doing one and then skip a stair or two stairs and then do two. Or maybe go back to one, you know, just rep out doing one or two. You don't need to do three in a row right off the bat. If you want to not be a drone in any single bill fight that you're in, if at any point in time someone does a double edit on you like this, what I would do in this position down here is the second I get edited on, I'm going to look up and place a wall in their face to block them. Then I can go out the back and leave that thing all together and I'll be in a good spot. Or if I wanted to, I can full piece someone from this box and then go for a shot here. These are the most fundamental things I build every Every single time I'm in a real game against real players. Stair, floor, wall, stair, floor, wall. Make sure you never do it any other way. Don't do floor, wall, stair. It's 
stair floor wall because hear me out the reason being is because if you want to continue to block an angle you already have your walls out so you just look in the direction you want to block so in fast motion all i have to do is just drag over those walls and it blocks that angle so it's really easy next even to this very day i still use this all the time is a double edit and then a full box from down below when you start out doing it what you're going to do is just do it really slow get on the edge place the walls cones and then go to the next box and do it again the best way to build a box in this game goes like so so it's wall floor spin around and then if i want a cone in my box i'll place a cone up and down now if you don't do it the way i'm showing you this is what's going to happen you're going to place wall you're going to spin around and you're probably going to place extra builds above your head also another really safe way when i want to create another box i'll come out here and then i'll start with the walls first and then the tops so another box, I'll come like this and then like that. So since this is a straight beginner guide, I'm gonna tell you that you can straight up land no matter how high, right on an umbrella and never take fall damage. Also, the same thing goes for bushes, dumpsters, anything like that, you never take any fall. But I might be dead to zone. Go, 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 go. Oh my God, I got in at the last second. If you wanna win more fights anytime you shoot somebody with your shotgun, it's shoot, place wall right away. Always get in the habit of just shooting someone and placing a wall right in their face. So anytime I'm running up to someone, I'm gonna shoot, place a wall right in his face. Shoot, place wall. Oh wow, that kid got laced. So I'm gonna drop down on this guy. Shoot, place wall. And this just allows for an easy kill. As you fight people throughout your time on the game, it's not always a good kill just because you won the fight. As you take your game to the next level, all the players that you're going to face are going to try and limit 50-50s as much as possible. One of the things you never want to do starting out to turn around while you're building, you never want to jump up and then jump up again. So whenever you see me turn around, I'm going to turn around, build, and then jump and lead with my stairs. So by building first, then jumping, I essentially save myself doing two jumps, which helps me save time. This is the most fundamental retake that you should learn start now. Place a stair just like this, and then all you want to do is high wall up, stair. Then from here, all you're going to do is just edit out and then practice doing the same motion over and over again. And you can do this from both sides. If you practice this every single time you get on, I don't know, for maybe a couple minutes or so, you're going to get way better at it over time or in a given week. It can lead into a million more complicated things, which is the sole reason why I think people should master it early on. So you get used to doing more complicated stuff later. For some reason, cones just reach really, really far. As you can see, I can't place floors, but if I look over here, I could place cones all around me. So whenever I fight someone, I always try and take peace control from really, really far away like so and use those cones to my advantage. A really big game changer for me when I was starting out learning how to build was that you can place floors and cones from like really far below a stair just like this. So if I come here, I can get this double edit right here. So a lot of times I'll be ramping up and then I'll instantly try and claim a double edit and then I'll full box someone. But starting out, it's really good to know that your cones can kind of just go right in this position right here as well as floors. This is exactly how I'll probably show on screen now of me getting really Really solid clips because of this move. This move right here is an OG move. It's called a Mongrel Classic. If you come to Raiders first peace control map, there's a wall replace Mongrel Classic section. So you come here and then all you do is you take the wall, you edit it, place a stair, flip it back, and then shoot the guy. And then every time you do this, it just brings you into another one and another one and another one. Every single montage has one of these moves in it. And if you wanted to do it safely, what people started to do is do it behind a window edit like so. So it's boom, boom, boom. Now I'm doing it pretty fast. Takes a lot of practice, but it's well worth it. You can get really crafty on Fortnite by just knowing that your walls can place right above cones. Some of the ways include this retake right here. It's really not that bad. Just stairs, cone, high walls, edit, and then you're good to go. You could do this as slow as you want until you get it down. I'd recommend going at like a snail speed to do it exactly how I'm doing it right now so that you can get some practice with it. What people do a lot is they cone, they high wall, and then they side jump from here then it blocks their back as they do so. So as I do any sort of retake or I'm doing any sort of edit, you're gonna see how I'm extending the time I have on the ramp. So by, for example, if I do a double edit and I wanna have more time to edit, I'll go from diagonal left to right. And then I'll go from the opposite way like this. And it allows me to have more time on the ramp and it gives me more time to edit. Or when I'm trying to edit like this, I'll curve around the floor. You see how I'm going like in a U shape boom like that and then it allows me to have more time that way too so i could just run straight at stuff like this but you know some people aren't that advanced so that you need to curve the time you have so that you can have more generally speaking any edit you make in fort 
Whoa. Any edit you make in Fortnite, you want to do it while being head level. So I'm going to come across and if there was someone on the opposite side, let's say they were in this box, I'm going to come and I'm going to edit right in their face. So it's head level and I can line up a headshot. That's good crosshair placement. Or when I make this edit, if I start here and then come and confirm this all the way down here, now I have to go back up to look at my target. But if I started here and then went to the middle, I'm right in the head. So whenever you do an edit on a wall, always try to make sure you start with either this tile first or you start with this tile first because no matter how you swing it, you're always going to be at the head level. So if I'm being honest, I think the biggest mistake people have starting out is spending too much time in real games. Oh God. I've always spent majority of my time, even to this very day, playing a lot of creative because I just feel... I've always spent majority of my time, even during back in the day and to this very day, just playing a lot of creative if I want to get better. There's definitely times on the game where I don't want to practice as much that day, but whenever I'm trying to get really consistent with my fighting, I'd say at least half of my time is dedicated to creative. If you're in a free build map and you're kind of confused on what to learn and practice, start out by just looking up random videos. Best high ground retakes. Boom. There's Ken Beans coming up in the second spot. So pretty much how this works is the more advanced stuff you can commit to memory, the more or you're going to be able to know what to do when something random happens and learning different high ground retakes helps you learn movement better because you understand where you need to position yourself i'm going to leave a link down to my video my retake video down below so when you play actual games right you're not going to go to the corner you're going to land over here in the far edge and just box up in your box wait to get to the end what i want to see you guys doing is running up to boxes like this throw yourself at players and just learn how to take walls and get kills quickly the more situations you find yourself in <laughs> the more situations you end up getting into, you're going to realize what you need to do. And there, I needed to not have pre-edits. The people who just camp are absolutely wasting their time. There is no reason I need to get solo late game wins to prove to my friends that I'm good. So some people, when they play Fortnite, they think that the zone is completely RNG. If you want to make sure that you're in the next zone, just try to put yourself in the direct center. This white circle that you see now will always be about half the size in diameter of the next circle. So that means that if you're in the center, I'll show you what circle on the screen right now no matter what that center point in blue will at least be the edge of the next zone okay so the zone's about to close and and that point is in right there now just to prove the point again i'm gonna mark the center of the next one and we're gonna head over there two one and we're in the next zone. So the people who have been playing the game for a while, it's common knowledge that when you have your blueprints out, you can edit and build from further away, just like this. So I can, you know, do all fancy resets on this wall and all that. I might get keyed by this guy, but it's fine. So what I like to do is set up shop. So if I were to roll up to this guy, I get one box away. I box up. And I just hold this, right? So then I'll try and take his wall with this gun here. And I'd be on my merry way. So here we go again. Take the wall from here. And he's dead. That's a situation where you could use that move. As a beginner, the fastest way to gain confidence is how to tarp. If you could start out learning just how to half tarp like this, boom, boom, boom. And being able to do it from both sides as well. When I do half tarp and I want to take out my walls, I let go of the floor and all my builds together until I'm able to look here and then I'll place the wall. So I'm holding, I'm holding, I let go. And then I switch to my wall and I place and now I look up and hold my floors again. It makes you more of an independent player so you don't have to rely on anyone. So if there's someone to your right over here, I'm going to block that side as I run forward. A lot of people when they play with teammates, they just let their teammates do all the building. They jump around as they run through the tarp. Start practicing to do it by yourself. So the fastest way to get double edit practice goes like this. You just walk in a straight line and then you look to your left and you double edit. And then you just run to the next one and do the same thing over and over. When I started to really perfect my double edits was when I started doing this drill. Now, keep in mind, you could skip one if you're going too fast. So they write, I can skip one and then just go to the next one. No troll though. This is literally a move I do all the time, but it will be a full box instead. So you can jump three times in a row. This is two. This is three. The fourth time is when you do that little weird fatigue jump. So this is a useful tip to not spam your jump button all the time, because if I do three nineties in a row, by the time I get to the fourth one, I, I get slowed down and I lose momentum, which is something you never want to do on Fortnite. So one of the first things I learned as a beginner was how to exploit into someone's box. So if it's a wood tarp, I'm going to smack it once. 
and then I'm going to place a stair over my head and I'm going to force myself into this box. So I jump and swing my pickaxe at the same time while running forward. So I'm just going to literally walk forward and just jump and pickaxe at the same time. So in faster motion, let's go show you on someone's wall. Here we go. Jumping in right there. And he's dead. That's how I force the issue and get a quick kill if I need. So the reason why you see pros when they roam the map, they jump up and down, they're sliding nonstop, they're constantly moving, rather than just straight walking like this, it's because you're way harder to hit. And as a beginner player, like when you run out of sprint, just run around, jump, and just constantly get used to pressing that jump button because it does make you harder to hit if someone's got lines of sights on you. So when you box fight someone or just fight someone in general, I'm gonna tell you a few quick things to do. So right away, see how he puts a cone in my box? And he put a cone in his box again? Every single time you box up, always put a cone in there so that you can stop things just like that because they'll naturally go for that peace control. So specifically, here we go. Boxing up near a guy, putting a cone in both of these boxes. Now I'm going for this wall. No matter how you feel, I know that majority of people, especially when I started out, I hated putting cones in my box because it's just another thing I have to edit. But when I got more comfortable with it, I started winning way more fights and having just more control in general. So if I'm playing someone and then out of nowhere, they ramp above my head like so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a wall right in front of them and block them from going up this stair. In fast motion, I just go like this, land on a floor, and then ramp over their head. At this point in the game it's definitely one of my go-to's see he just did it to me right there as well promise me there's one thing you're never gonna do when you get shot is box up in one box just like this guy so let's say I get shot by this guy okay he's trying to full piece me I just wanted to shoot me okay if I get shot I don't want to create just one box like this because that's because. So whenever you get shot, stay in between two walls like this, and you can turn around and create two boxes very easily. This is a little trick I use whenever I want to create two boxes really fast. So as you're free falling in this game, if you continue to hold the movement key forward or to the left or to the right, you'll go more of that direction. So if I naturally fall off, it will look like this and I just land here. But if as I'm falling, I continue to go forward, I'll land a little further than what I did previously. So now depending on how high you are and if I sprint jump over, you know, I'll go further. But it's good to know you have a little time to sway the direction you want to go. Although it looks pretty cool to triple edit a million times in a row, this is extremely difficult for someone who's a beginner of course i just want to give you a reminder that learning how to do all those fancy things is not necessary when you start out not even like a month in what i would tell someone who's new to the game when you cannot look at your binds when you're in a fight so if i want to take out my smg i gotta look for my bind on my keyboard and then i gotta press it if you are at that point don't even worry about trying to do anything fancy once you can remember everything without looking down that's when i would recommend to start doing things that you aren't really comfortable with so the biggest thing i would say for players starting out is learning what to do when you're trying to heal and you get shot in a fight because a lot of times the players that you're fighting would just apply such good pressure and you would have no idea what to do so i'm gonna purposely get cracked here hopefully i don't die though so almost every time you're gonna want to create two boxes right away like i talked about earlier so let's see if this guy can just shoot me here because he's in this cone oh jesus just just hit me with that just, just come on Oh, God. Oh, my God. Any <laughs> emos. Okay, so I'm going to show you what to do when you get cracked. And usually, just to tell you, give you a fair warning, you want to create two boxes right away. Okay, so now this guy's going to keep the pressure on me. So I got two boxes here. Now he's going to try and get in on me. So once I got counter damage, notice this guy's probably going to heal up. So I'm going to go over here, create another box. Because I created that box, he knows to run away now. That's because he was in the danger zone in this box because he was in front of my wall. So he was taking a little bit of a risky edit, but it ended up working out. Now we got that guy successfully away from me and I got the heals up. Now he probably wants more. That guy's dead. And that guy's dead. So I'm going to show you the other way. So hopefully this guy can crack me. Really hope he can crack me. Okay, so once I get cracked, I'm going to create tarps away vertically backwards. Now, if, I'm just going to hold this because he's trying to get out. 
And now, see how I'm getting counter damage in that tarp? He's still in all my edits. And I got the kill. Without even healing up, I created this vertical tarp here that allowed this guy, he kind of to chase me through my builds and he got antsy, he overplayed and he died because of it. So something like this is super hard to do and I don't expect you guys to master this. This took me a really long time, especially starting out. I'm gonna show in slow motion, it's floor, floor, finish with walls. As you walk forward, you're gonna place the stairs. So floor, floor, walls left, right, stair. Floor, floor, walls left, right, stair. And I constantly and constantly rep that out. So depending on where you look when trying to place walls, you can place them right in front of you. By looking sharply down like this, you're gonna see I use this a lot in my fights. Right there, right there as well. I just look really close down so that way he can't get that wall first. Sometimes that's like a must on the game. Let's see if I can do it again though. I'll be looking right down, directly to the floor. Again, right there. It's really just one small move that will help you not take damage. Sometimes when I want to leave a box quickly, I'll look directly up as well if I need to. So it's either looking down or up to get the wall in front of you. Again, I'll try and demonstrate it. Up and then shot. So sometimes when players are weak in a game and you don't really want to spend the mats to box up completely, right? A decent amount of the time, you're going to see them just come here and just sit in a cone like this. They're gonna pop their heels, they get everything off, and then they just edit out, and they saved like, I don't know, three or four more builds, and now they can continue going on with the game. The most drone but useful retake to do. It's literally just to double ramp up, and then all you wanna do is turn around, but place this wall first, jump again, and then land on that. Now I know what you're thinking. Is this even considered a retake? This is quite literally the most body thing to do, but it is effective for people who are starting out and it gives you a kind of sense or a feel for retakes in general. Especially if you're brand new to the game, I can promise you that this is the easiest one that you're gonna see. So every single time you're gonna hop on to play in the game, you're always gonna use hard mats in your fights. Reason being is because it actually discourages third parties. If this guy sees me building out of metal, it's going to be super hard for him to shoot through a million different walls. If it's wood though, it's a lot easier for him to spray through. Just drilled into your head that if you have hard mats, always switch them. This is because wood is always two pickaxe swings. So I pretty much pray for people to fight me in wood because it's just really easy to grab. And uh, yeah, especially when you're versing someone like this. So the only thing I cannot stand about controller is that when you fall down on controller, you have to use a stair. When I do it on keyboard, it's really easy to land on a floor just like so. It's really difficult to land on a floor just like this because the binds for it are using the same hand. I could be an absolute bot with that one, but I swear that is the most difficult thing about it. So I just want you to know that I feel your frustration because no one told me that when I was first playing on controller. So when you get scared and you're weak on top of it, do yourself a favor and don't don't always try to create vertical space like I'm doing here. A lot of times on Fortnite, what really changes the game for people is creating a lot of horizontal space like this. Having all these boxes to play in and having this space is way better than most of the time having that vertical space. There's definitely a time and a place for having high ground in a fight, but nine times out of 10, you're gonna want that horizontal. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys the safest way that I deal with people when they're underneath my stair. I'm gonna show you the edit that I make specifically almost every single time. So first we gotta get in that spot. Oh my Jesus, we almost had him. Okay, so this is what I do. I come down here, literally exactly like that. Now, what's really cool about this edit is that I can't be seen in this spot right here. So from this guy's POV, he has a left hand peek. So if I do it quick enough, and if he's pressed up against the back of the box, that would be the right edit. If you wanna kill a sweaty player fast, even if you absolutely suck at the game, you kinda have to time it to jump right in their face and just kinda 50-50 them. I know it might sound a little stupid, but most of the time there's a lot of players on the game who just edit course nonstop. And if you can kinda jump in between their builds, you'll get them killed every single time. Just like how I died on the screen right now. Something I notice when beginners are building, they just never take out their shotgun during fights. So when you start out, build a little bit, take out your shotgun. Build a little bit, take out your shotgun. It's really important to kinda 
trying to gain awareness as you're building and always be ready to shoot someone and you should be really quick with pressing that button so something you might not know and this is a little bit more advanced but it's still good to know which is why i'm including it in this video but you can practically edit anything through a window edit like i'm doing right now so sometimes to get a little bit of a sneaky kill i'll edit the wall in front of me a certain way so that i can get a nice shot on the guy in front of me so let's say you're fighting someone right this is just a random build fight and then out of nowhere you get chopped out so as i'm falling i'm gonna be looking down and trying to land on this right here two walls and then a floor or you can land on this right here two walls and a cone like so but doing stuff like this it always limits the amount of fall damage you take so it's really good to try and practice this as you're just naturally falling when you're building in creative it's definitely way better than just landing and doing absolutely nothing this is the stuff that i barely want to do so i get it but if you aim train on kovacs for like 10 minutes out of your day before you get on you'll see a ton of improvement with your mouse control on the game i remember the first time i got kovacs i'd never seen so much improvement in my crosshair placement before really worth it in my opinion this is not really a beginner tip but since chapter 4 came out it got stupid easy to build through walls now I mean you could literally build almost any single piece you want and if you come up a layer like this you could just build all around and then you can place floor you can place stair all you have to do is just walk right up to a wall and as long as you're pressed up against it just looking downwards to, to the left ish area then you're good to go and you can just do it really quickly so I could just come here boom like that so whenever i'm trying to connect to a building let me show you what i do instead of using floors i'll be a little higher up though i'm gonna run and then use cones to connect more than one tile away so whenever you're trying to leap to something you always want to use cones because they reach further like that so making a window edit in today's meta is not always good enough so i'm gonna show you how i play an extreme angle whenever i'm box fighting something so whenever i grab a wall oh hold up <laughs> it's pretty rare for people who are starting out to understand this mechanic but if you make a window edit just make sure you're really tucked to like the left side so you can have a right hand peek and the biggest thing is for you to wait for people to walk through that window edit because if they're not that good they're gonna literally walk to the window themselves okay so boom look how i'm waiting on this window edit you see that little patience just like that will really go a long way a lot of times when people are beginners and they make window edits it's not nearly going to look like that the best augments in the game are hands down aerialist forecast splash medic and first assault these are my absolute go-to augments whenever i play arena here is your introduction to high walls they're most commonly used to do this move right here so let's just pretend that i get coned i'm gonna go around up and play stairs so in slow motion it looks like that and then also what i could do sometimes is i'll throw stairs out like this so it's easier to move over to the next one doing it like this is a little bit more difficult compared to doing it like this so in slow motion again i'm gonna go wall stair continue the stair out and then place a high wall keep in mind you can do this as many times as you want from either side it doesn't matter chances are you won't look like this starting out if i had to imagine it's gonna be something slow like this and then you're just gonna constantly go like that so this right here is called a side jump you're jumping to the side of a stair. I'm not kidding when I say that there's so many different types of side jumps in the game. It's actually ridiculous. You might want to look up a video, the best type of side jumps, but I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest type of side jump to master that actually works in a game. You're going to start out with this right here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to jump, land on a floor. Then you're going to place a wall and then a stair, and then you're good to go. So in a faster motion, I'm going to go like this and then ramp up. If you're starting out, especially if your sense is slow, that's gonna be one of the side jumps that you're probably gonna wanna start mastering first. One of the hardest side jumps in the game to master is something called the high wall side jump. I'm gonna show you what it is. So you got a cone here, I'm gonna high wall, land on a floor, then place a stair, and then you have officially done your first high wall side jump. This is no joke something I use every single time I fight someone because once I do the move, I use this wall and I try and go for peace control. By the way, another quick tip, if you wanna get the peace control through this window edit, some people, they get cones up and down and they end up getting it on their head. A very good tip is to make sure you're pressed against the wall and then you'll have no problem placing these builds. So in fast motion, you come here, and then every time I'll be really consistent with doing it. When I first started out and I wanted to do it, I would do it like this and it would get stuck on my head all the time. Super annoying. So not only do you want to get good at shooting people and then placing a wall right away, you want to get good at using a floor as well. So I shoot and place a floor. So I'm going to walk over, shoot, place floor. Sometimes when I try and get a right hand peek, I look sideways just like this. And then I shoot them and place a floor like that. When you look sideways, sometimes you can set yourself up with a better peek. So I'm going to show you my go-to way to not get boxed when I'm trying to box fight someone else. So I'm going to roll up to this box. 
I'm gonna place a cone and I'm gonna place a wall on the other side, preferably on the right side. It literally doesn't matter at all. But I'll roll up like this and then I'll take the wall. Now, if I didn't get this wall and he were to make an edit on me, I would just flip the cone and then leave out this side and then I could just leave, you know, this way. Having the wall there is pre-piece control. That's what that's called. And that's what you want to start practicing early on. So that way you can't get boxed by other people. Always have an escape route. One of the most risky things you can do, especially when you're slow at pressing the buttons at first, when you're trying to learn how to play the game, is double swinging on walls like so. Especially if the wall doesn't break, by the time you swing your third pickaxe, you're going to be swinging at nothing and this guy's gonna make an edit and shoot you it's a huge no-no when you start out unless you get quicker with pressing the buttons quick so if he does edit out i'll quickly place a wall come over here take it and go crazy not a lot of people are that fast when they start out so just whenever you swing your pickaxe if you do it twice i would just honestly move away from that box and just wait for him to make an edit so the safest way to start taking a wall in this game is to start spraying it as you go up to it because they're just gonna always hold their map out until you don't get it so let's see what happens here so I'm going to run up to this guy's box. And I got it. First try. Let's see what this guy does. The second I don't get it, now I back up and I play passive. But if I start doing it again, now he has to react. And I got it. And I'm playing safe again. So anytime you want to have a chance at taking a wall, the best thing to do is probably start spraying first because it makes the people hold their map out. Let's see what happens here. And if he doesn't, you see how it just broke as I was shooting it? And then I just claim it really quickly. And he's dead. So no matter the skill level in the game, one of the safest ways to play defense is by pre-firing people. Because it's practically really easy once you learn how to shoot and place a wall. So if he comes over... pre-fire and then that time it was a reset instead of, uh, instead of a build. Sometimes instead of shooting and placing a wall... I'll shoot and get used to resetting really quickly too. So it's one or the other. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to time a pre-fire right here. Right there, boom, got the wall. Now he's dead. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one of the biggest tips that I have when I'm trying to take someone's wall and I don't get it, specifically in like one situation because as a beginner, I feel like it's important. I drop down on a guy's wall, right? If I don't get it, okay, I instantly slide off and create a new box just like that. And then I'll try and go back and attack his wall from another angle or something. Never in your life do you want to play Fortnite. Try and take a wall. If you don't get this wall, you just sit there and try and pickaxe it again. The best thing you could do for yourself, the second... What the smokes? The best thing you could do for yourself is the second that the wall breaks and you end up not getting it, change the course of how you're going to attack that box. Maybe go from a different angle. I do that every single time and it makes me stay unpredictable. People always ask me, what do I do when I get full box? So pretend I'm the enemy player and I'm going to box myself. I'm obviously not in here yet. I'm going to box myself and now I'm fully boxed. What do I do? I'm going to duck behind the cone like this and I'm going to try and spray this wall out. Now, if this guy continues to run in after he full boxes me, I have to 50-50 him. But I'm going to try and use this cone as a little bit of cover. Maybe go for a peak shot or something like that. If I get lucky enough and he tries to go for a top right hand corner edit like this, by the time he makes that edit, I'm going to be spraying this wall and moving to the right and just trying to stay in this corner here. That way, in hopes I grab the wall, I can pickaxe and then turn around and create a new box. One thing that I wish was out when I first started playing was this edit tower drill. So you just spawn in here and you practice editing as many tiles as you can or as you really want to without losing your mind, of course. And you can really just try and spam as many edits as you want. You can do double edits as well, like this. And it may not look like I'm editing anything, but if you give it a couple, it will look like it when I look up. You see that? These things could have helped me so much more when I first started out because there was just nothing like this to help me get the edit timing down. So anytime I'm editing something, I always try to make sure that there's no blue as much as possible. So it's just like very quick movements and getting rid of that blue off my screen. It kind of gives you good muscle memory of what to do in certain situations. So when I do a double edit, it looks like that. So if you see blue when you edit and you go like this, it's okay when you start out, but you want to build up to being able to do it really quick like that. So push this this video to 100 tips i'm going to show you my best drill that i used as a beginner to help me get comfortable pushing people it starts out with stair cone and it gets me used to avoiding cones so whenever i get coned i go around it just like this and this is essentially the drill so it's rather difficult if you've never done it before it's stair cone 
and then you're going to drag over the walls and place the stairs above you and then finish with the cone again and now you just switch between going right and left and this is how you push someone when someone's above you without taking damage i'm going to show you the easiest way to get perfect ramp flips in the game without even trying this is something i started using as a beginner and once someone told me about this it just got so much easier so what i do is i drag over my floors and then i place the stair right when i want to flip it i turn it completely to me then from here when i'm going up i'm waiting for the black to go to the bottom of my screen like that that's how i know i got it perfect so if i do it here it's not going to work if i do it here it's not going to work i want to have it go at the bottom just like that so every time it goes right over my screen i just flip it really quick and i've gotten pretty used to it so it kind of i can do it rather fast but yeah also another way for beginners to edit stairs you can not just go forward and back you can go to the right like that also you can go to the left so look at it like this whichever one i grab first and bring it to a corner that's the direction it's gonna go so if i drag this one in any direction it's just gonna go to my right like that the very last thing before i have to grab a sip of water is don't forget to use code ken beans in the shop if this video helped you at all i really do appreciate it consider hitting the sub button if you're new and by the way i'm gonna be posting tutorial type of content on my main channel and the second channel is gonna be the tournaments that i play so if you're interested in that go drop that a sub as well and it's been your man ken i'll see you in the next video Peace.